All right. I own a rental property in Santa Cruz and they are uh, very liberal on their ADU policies. I want to build an ADU on the property and convert the garage into a junior ADU. Looking to finance this and I'm stuck. The numbers are below. I hope you can point me in the right direction. Uh, again, this, this one comes from Omar. So the value is 1.125 million. Construction budget is 365,000, including cosmetic remodel of the house. ARV is 1,975,000. Um, owes 840,000 with, uh, with Wells Fargo at 3.35 interest rate. I hope to keep the first mortgage and get some sort of second, but I'm open to ideas as the property will generate significant uh, significant cash flow once it's complete. Thanks. Okay. All right. That's a that's a good one. So ADUs are very difficult to finance. Um, there's a couple specialty lenders that will do this. Uh, that are the private funding. Now I, you're currently at 840 on a one million 125 value. So I think that's about 70 percent. So you're leveraged at 70 or 75 percent. Uh, I can't do the math in my head, but but the point being is, is that um, I think it's there's there's a possibility to do a it's a it's an investment property. We could potentially do a, a do a new first mortgage and give you rehab money for the remodel of the existing property, converting the uh, either the garage or whatever you're converting into the junior ADU, and then giving you or funding the construction of the ADU. And I don't know if it's a prefab ADU or you're doing a, a stick built ADU, but but I think in general on something like this, you're probably looking at 75 to 80 percent of total project costs being able to be funded. Um, and the and the gross loan amount probably won't be able to exceed 70 to 75 percent of the ARV on this. So it's a little bit tricky to fund these ADUs. Um, but it's very doable depending on locations. So we have a, a lender we work with in California, for example, and they have a lot of experience funding ADUs and they'll see the problem with uh, modular built ADUs, they're built not on site, right? So they're hard, hard to finance because they're construction loans want to, they want to make loans as progress is made and the, and the manufacturers of these ADUs, they want progress payments and it's being built in the factory. So that's a huge problem, but I do have a lender. If it's specific to California that we're getting these done, these um, modular ADU properties, and I understand why you know some of you want to do it, them as a modular build because it's done and, and they bring it to the property. You pour your pad, you hook up utilities, you finish the inside, and it's done. Versus you know bringing on the lumber and building it from the ground up. So. There's a possibility, I would say realistically, um, if the if the property's worth two million dollars or million nine seventy five, you're going to probably be capped at a gross loan amount of a million four eighty one two fifty. We probably have to take out the senior debt, which is three point three five, which is extremely good. So I know it'd be painful, but I but I see here that you know it's going to be a great cash flowing machine. So. If you're able to get this done and then refinance into a permanent loan, and even if the rates are in the sixes, would it still make sense? And that's the question you're gonna have to like crunch the numbers and figure out. But we could also look at doing a second, depending maybe you have other real estate holdings and we could look at cross, -collateral cross collateralizing some of your other holdings. That's the way we would do it. So this isn't a kind of a one size fits all. A lot of these kind of unique projects take a little bit of uniqueness to structure the deal so i would ask you a lot of questions like do you own any other property maybe we can take um take out a little bit of cash from another property or maybe we cross collateralize uh one of your additional rental properties uh or maybe it's going to work as is and we can figure out so there's a lot of ways to get a, these projects done we just got to kind of meet and discuss the details a little bit more to, to give you an accurate assessment but to answer your question we can fund this type of project not a problem. Hope that helps. And uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed these, these Q&A segments. Uh, that's our last question for today. As always, you can go to investorfinancingpodcast.com forward slash ask, and you can ask your questions and we're going to answer them on the show. 
And I think this, what this does is it gives people that are out there watching like a little bit of background of what people are doing and how, what solutions we could offer that make the most sense. A lot of people don't know about DSER loans. They, they don't know that they can buy properties without providing income, their personal income documentation. They don't need to qualify from a debt to income standpoint, uh, debt to income standpoint themselves. There's a lot of programs for investors um, because most real estate investors have a hard time if they're just in real estate investing and don't have like a W-2 job or another business that's doing a lot of income because they have a lot of write-offs. So it makes uh, debt, D, makes your DTI pretty hard to, to uh, achieve for conventional financing. That's why there's non-QM, DSCR loans, and all this good stuff. So anyways, we will see you on the next episode. And thanks, as always, for uh, watching us. And thanks, Bill, for your help. Thank you.